Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Hello and welcome to the Red Laser Guy show. I'm Joe Blanton. I'm your host tonight. I'm the Red Laser Guy and uh, I guess I'm your entertainment here for the next 50 minutes or so. So I want to welcome you uh, to our show. We're all about helping you help yourself, help your body heal itself naturally. And again, it has to be done in that sequence. And what tonight we're going to do tonight is take a kind of a deep dive into the science behind structured uh, infrared water and some of the testing we've done a little later on in the show. We'll hear from Dr. Kuhn down in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. She's the president of GDB uh, Camera Southwest. It's a biophotonic camera that takes pictures of life force energy uh, and anything. And she's done a lot of testing for us over the last 14 years uh, on all of our products because all of our products have uh, what we call life force energy added into them. In Europe, they call it bovis energy, B-O-V-I-S. And they have a, a unit that actually measures it. And so we'll refer back and forth between bovis energy uh, being equal to what we call life force energy. So all of our products are programmed with human blueprint frequencies, uh, which are optimal wellness frequencies for the body. Uh, a muscle that's uh, totally 100% healthy vibrates at a specific frequency. Okay. And if it's hurting, it's vibrating lower than that. And we infuse the optimal wellness frequency into the body. The lower frequency will always infrain up to the higher frequency. And when it does, your body, uh, your mitochondria start to create more life force energy, more ATP. Uh, and then uh, it brings your blood into uh, more with more negative ions, uh, more negative electrons. And so that separates your blood into totally free flowing where all your red blood cells are separate. So when your red blood cells go through the, the lungs, they give up more toxins, they pick up more oxygen, and it gives you better microcirculation. And pain is simply lack of oxygen on a cellular level, okay? It's my simplified version of it. So when you get more life force energy, better microcirculation, more oxygen, pain dissipates uh, and, you know, goes and re reduces. And so, but it's not being covered up like it is with today's modern chemicals. Uh, it's actually... Uh, the body starting to have the energy and the oxygen and the life force it needs to start healing that you know situation, whatever it is. So that's what we're into tonight. And let me see if I can. Oh, got a uh, one of one of the things we're going to hear about tonight is uh, Dr. Batman Galdage uh, book. And when I was rereading it, I came across this statement, which really uh, says a lot. It says, today, our understanding of water goes beyond Dr. Batman Gottlieb's admonition to drink more water. Okay, it even goes beyond Dr. John's encouragement to drink structured water, which is what we're offering you, structured, microclustered, etc. Today, we can take also take advantage of the fact that water can carry information into our bodies. That just can, it does, okay, because uh, water has memory of everywhere it's been. So in fact, water can carry patterns that will change the way our cells respond. In this way, water literally can be, water literally has the capacity to become medicine without the consequences of drugs and surgery. Well, Dr. Batmagaldage referred to water as medicine all along, uh, and he actually used, a, you know, simple water to treat uh, all sorts of uh, cases in his uh, studies and uh, everything. So that's what he wrote the book about. And so let's go ahead and uh, start the slide presentation here. Okay. And let's just jump right into it here. Uh, Dr. Batman Gallage wrote the book, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. Okay. Water. When you're in pain, your body's crying for water. It's just for really that simple. Okay, his subtitle is, you're not sick, you're thirsty. 
don't treat thirst with medication. Okay, and that's what most people are doing. They're treating their, you know, they're actually thirsty, and that's real close to hungry. So a lot of people, you know, when they're thirsty, they they go get something to eat uh, because the sensations are real close. And they're not, and, and the more unaware you are of your body, the harder it is to distinguish between the two. So it's, uh, you know, it's quite a problem in our society. They say that about 75% of our society are chronically dehydrated okay and we'll get into that here a little bit more but here's the real problem the significant problems we have cannot be solved at the same level of thinking with which we we created them that's a statement by albert einstein one of my favorites okay and just think about it what it does is put the responsibility back on each and every one of us for whatever's going on in our world you know we created it or we helped create it And so we have to take responsibility for changing it. And so the problem is, you know, the second definition was continuing to do the same thing the same way and expecting different results. Okay, that was Albert Einstein's uh, definition of insanity. You know, if you do the same thing the same way over and over and over, you're going to get the same results. And it's going to be either increasing or decreasing uh, as you do it over and over because there's no standing still in life. You know, you're in a momentum, no matter what you, and we're going to talk specifically about health, okay? Your health status is in momentum. It's either staying healthy, getting healthier, or it's getting weaker and weaker and weaker going down. And so you're the only one that can turn that around and structured microclustered water, high electron uh, water, high frequency water <clears throat> is the best way to start doing that because again, Water is used in every function of the body. So we'll get into that a little bit more here too. So false assumption, okay? Processed fruit, juices, tea, coffee, sodas, and caffeinated drinks will meet my water needs. Nothing substitutes for pure structured water. Nothing. You're not going to get, you know, processed fruit, juices, teas, coffee, uh, especially the teas and the coffee and the caffeinated drinks are diuretics. They're going to cause you to pee out more as much or more <laughs> than you drink. Okay. So that's a real false assumption is that you're getting your, your daily need of water. You're not because water is water and there's no substitute for it. Anything you put in water, now it's not water anymore. It's the tea. It's a, it's a, you know, a juice, it's coffee, it's processed as food it's not, you know, structured and uh, identified. The body can't immediately use it as free water in the body. So that's one of the challenges. So again, your body's many cries for water. Uh, one of, of the total number of molecules in our body, over 99% of them are water. Okay, that's how much water we are in our body. And that's by weight, uh, is the way I understand it. So without water, we cannot survive. You know, water is our life is sustaining substance. Now, granted, we need oxygen, but oxygen doesn't flow without water. Okay, we need food, but food doesn't digest without water. Uh, so that's the, the challenge we're in right there. We need sunlight, but sunlight charges water. So the less water you have, the less charge you're getting into that water of elect- electrons to bring the mitochondria into a uh, ability to function and produce more life force energy and more ATP. So uh, there's two kinds of water in our body. You know, there's, there's already occupied and engaged water. Water is already, you know, functioning in a process in our body. And then there's free water. And the free water needs to be replaced every day. Every day we are reusing up the water. So a mere 2% drop in our body's water supply can trigger signs of dehydration. Signs of dehydration are things like fuzzy thinking, difficulty focusing on small print like in your computer, uh, daytime fatigue, uh, the list goes on and on. You start getting headaches. Uh, there's all sorts of challenges. You start getting more pain in your body uh, when you start getting more dehydrated. So our need for water changes on a daily basis based on numerous things, which we'll cover here in a little bit. So just like, you know, a car cannot run without gas and oil, your body cannot function without water. Water is used in every function in the body. And, you know, coffee's not used there. Tea's not used there. It's water. 
and the higher quality of water you're drinking, you know, it's like higher get higher octane gas you run, the better you know your car is going to run. So the higher quality of water, the better your body is going to function. All cellular and organ functions depend on water. No exceptions. Water is the only thing it uses. Uh, when there's a shortage of free water, dehydration is the primary pain-producing problem in the body. Read that again. Dehydration is the primary pain-producing problem in the body because it's like lubrication. Water is lubrication in the body. So if you run out of lubrication, you know, in a car, it starts squeaking because you got metal to metal. Well, same thing here. Without water, you know, you've got pain-producing problem in the body. Dehydration causes the body to go into uh, drought management mode. Drought management mode uh, means there's not enough free water to go around and wash out the toxic, uh, wash out, wash out the toxic byproducts of metabolic met, met, metabolic processes. I'll get it here in a minute. Uh, so the nerve endings in that area sense the toxicity and sound the alarm, which is pain to stop the activity causing toxic waste buildup. I'll give you an example. If you go out and work out, you know, and uh, if you haven't played volleyball for a year and you go out and play volleyball or you go snow skiing the first day and then the next day you can't hardly get out of bed, everything's aching. It's because you didn't have enough water in your system to, flux, to flush out the uh, toxins that were created from the muscular movement and the joint movement and everything in your body. So I had a problem in my 20s and early 30s, but for the last 40 years, I haven't had any problem at all with it because um, my body has got enough uh, water, free water in it, that when I do a new activity, I don't get stiff, you know, because it's flushing the uh, acids out of my muscles and stuff in motion, So, which is very valuable and feels really good, <laughs> all right? So getting rid of the waste. So many kinds of pain, thirst for free water. And so what we're just talking about, your muscles need it to flush out the, uh, the buildup of lactic acid from being, you know, new, being overused or, you know, exercised. Uh, there's just tons of everything that has pain involved in it is mostly because of the lack of free water. So water has a natural medicinal effect far superior to pain medicine. And that's what Dr. Batmagalage was using. He didn't have any, he was uh, a prisoner in Iran. And so he was treating people in the prison and all he had to work with was water. So it just amounted about how much water they needed for different situations and including peptic ulcers and things like that. So it's, a, it's an amazing book, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. I highly recommend it. Uh, I read through it. I got notes in it. I got it highlighted all over. But your body's many cries for water uh, will change your life if you get into it. Because it also gets into minerals, uh, using uh, unprocessed sea salt, uh, things like that, to help your body help itself heal itself naturally. Because the body has to do all the healing. So pain medications actually shut down the call for water, but they do not correct the free water shortage. So they're actually, you know, pushing against, which is the design, and we won't go any farther than that, right? But medications, you know, anytime you take a medication, now your body has to recover from the medication and heal the original problem you were given a medication for. So think about that one. Uh, water corrects the pain-producing drought and saves the body from further danger, okay? Uh, so water is the key, you know. It's like when there's a drought in Florida or in California, you know, there's the production of uh, oranges and fruits and vegetables and all suffer because they don't have enough water. So when they get more water, that takes care of the drought and everything starts to grow again. Same thing in our body. Every time you have a shortage of water, and again, a lot of people, uh, I'm hearing like 75% of the population are uh, chronically dehydrated, which means they're in a lot of pain, uh, a lot of foggy thinking, you know, just a lot of unhappy things going on, not having a lot of fun in life. 
So dehydration causes the body to go into the drought management mode, and the body eventually has to start rationing water uh, to life-giving functions. These functions uh, suffer and in time will cause nutrient deficiencies. And no matter how much you eat, you know, you're not going to digest it. You're not going to assimilate it. And that's where obesity comes from, diabetes, hypertension, strokes, uh, depression, chronic fatigue, ADD. All of those are symptoms of dehydration and more chronic type dehydrations. So even cholesterol in the arteries of the heart is caused by dehydration. When your heart doesn't have enough water, it goes into a stress mode. It has to pump harder, faster, and, uh, you know, stresses out everything. Same with muscles and all of that. Every individual has a unique need for water that varies according to gender, age, height, weight, and level of activity. So it changes every day based on your activity. You know, if you're sitting around all day long, you don't need as much water. If you're out running sprints or playing volleyball, you know, you're going to need more water. So the best guideline to drink uh, is to drink half of your body weight in ounces of water every day. So if you weigh 150 pounds, drink 75 ounces or so of, of pure structured water daily. Okay, the there's no science at all to support the eight glasses, eight eight ounce glasses of water a day. Um, somebody just come up with that, okay? But you know, there's no scientific backing that I can find for it. So again, Dr. You know, Batman Gollidge, your body's many cries for water. So one of the best times to drink water is first thing in the morning. You know, after you've been sleeping six or eight hours, something like that, the body's uh, low on free water. So, you know, drink six, eight, 16 ounces of water, which tops off your free water uh, and sets up your di digestive tract. So it's primed before breakfast, and that helps with the whole digestive process. Every good habit, another good habit, is to drink 8 to 16 ounces at least 10 minutes before every meal and before exercise. Uh, because, again, the water is what, you know, the body uses for lubrication and, and exercise and everything, and it's critical for digestion. So if you drink 8 to 16 ounces of water at least 10 minutes before, now it has time to process if it's, you know, healthy, structured, electron-rich water. It's got time to get into the lining of the stomach to be ready to create the acids and stuff for digestion. Okay, so exercise requires water for muscle function and to remove the lactic acid from the tissues following exercise. You know, if you remove them right away, then there is no stiffness and hurting the next morning or later that day, etc. So. Drink water before a meal. When you drink water before a meal, the body can distinguish between thirst and hunger. And that way, most people tend to chew more and eat less uh, when you have water uh, in your system before you have the meal. And it's better not to drink you know, much with the meal uh, because it does dilute, dilute the digestive foods, makes it a little harder. If you're into alkaline water, definitely do not drink alkaline water with the meal because you're drinking, you know, the higher al alkaline water and your uh, acids in your stomach need to be like one and a half to two pH, which is more like battery acid to digest the food. So definitely, you know, I don't drink any water with a meal. And then it's best to drink eight to 16 ounces of water about two to three hours after each meal. That way you're continually consuming water through the, throughout the day. So uh, drinking structured water Microclustered, electron-rich, ionized water improves hydration and overall energy, mental clarity, and a host of life-giving properties. Okay, so we're switching gears here now to the reason to drink and what to drink. Uh, structured water penetrate, structured water's penetration power hydrates cells quickly, enhancing cellular functions, and it excites the mitochondria, producing more ATP uh, because it's got the structure to it. It's got the electrons that the mitochondria is looking for for the electron chain uh, processing to create more ATP. And that's our life force energy in our cells. It's like the engine. Okay. It's the power producing uh, engine, uh, just like in a car. It's uh, the mitochondria are the key to the energy in our body, in our cells. 
So structured water is the water of choice for all biological organisms. Its structure interfaces with the cellular components of our body, our bodies quickly and easily uh, taking vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients into the cell with improved assimilation. You know, it's another problem we have is, you know, you can eat a lot and not assimilate much. It's not what you eat, it's how much your body assimilates. That's going to make a difference in healthier or less healthy uh, every day. So the assimilation is the key, and structured water helps tremendously with that. So dehydration is the number one cause of stress in our body in all ways, whether it's in the heart, whether it's in the lungs, uh, anywhere in the body, the joints. Dehydration is the number one cause of that stress. So drinking structured, microclustered, electron-rich ionized water is the quickest way to rehydrate the body. And so how do you do that? How do you get structured, microclustered, electron-rich, ionized water to every day at any time you want it? Well, you could go out in the mountains to a Rocky Mountain stream, spend some time in the sunshine, uh, and that will help you uh, do that. Sunshine on the water charges the water down a Rocky Mountain stream, structures it, microclusters it, uh, aerates it, and makes it healthier water. So that's one choice. The other way is like me. I carry my sunshine and my Rocky Mountain stream with me all the time. Okay, I have the red laser with the gold disc on it, and I have the uh, hydro combo here, which uh, duplicates the Rocky Mountain stream. So the red laser is red and infrared light, uh, and over 50% of the, la the rays coming from the sun is the infrared and red light that our body needs. Okay, the a gold disc is a biophotonic amplifier. It more than triples the efficacy of the laser. And we'll get into that a little bit here a little more. And then the Rocky Mountain Stream is uh, replicated by the Hydro Combo. It's a double charged with life force energy uh, frequencies and human blueprint frequencies. And so what I want to do next is I want to go into a short video here. Uh, well, it's about 20 minutes long, 21 minutes long, but it's Dr. Kuhn doing the uh, test on water. Because <clears throat> water, again, is very programmable. And we program water with these three items here. We're actually adding human blueprint frequencies and life force energy. And to prove that, we're going to do, uh, we're going to show this video on Dr. Kuhn uh, doing the life force energy test. It's fascinating uh, if you're into the science of how everything works. So, DJ, let's go ahead and play the video. Technology integration for amplified life force energy. So we'll be looking at how stacking different vibrance technologies can test our life force energy. I'm Beverly Kuhn. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I'm a mind-body integrative therapist. And most importantly, I'm a certified biofield analyst. I'm certified through Curlionics. Technologies uh, International, which is the parent company of the equipment I use to do biofield analysis. And my company, GDV Southwest, is the company that performed all the research and testing shown here. Biofield testing makes the invisible visible. And this is the equipment I used. It's called the GDV Pro equipment, and it's considered to be cutting edge medical or scientific grade equipment. It's utilized in medical clinics, hospitals, universities, and research facilities in Russia and over 40 other countries throughout the world. It's valued for its accuracy, its repeatability, and its verifiable results. It not only makes the invisible visible, but most importantly, it makes it measurable and quantifiable, which is how we're able to do these compare and contrast studies. For this study, I treated water samples with three different vibrance technologies, and I compared those with the baseline, which was city tap water. The first technology was the Pure V Hydro Combo, referred to here as the bottle topper. The second technology was the Vibrans red laser, and the third technology was the red laser wrapped with the pure V gold disc. 
and here I refer to it as the gold dot. The basic protocol was to test, compare, and contrast water from four different samples. The baseline was city tap water. I then poured that tap water through the bottle topper into two separate glasses and tested a sample drop. The first glass of bottle topper water was lasered with the red laser for 30 seconds. And the second glass of bottle topper water was lasered with the red laser wrapped with the gold dot, again for 30 seconds. All the test results were processed and analyzed through very specialized GDV software known as the Scilab program, which then plotted all the results into visual representations so that we can compare and contrast. And of course, the overall purpose was to determine which combo of vibrance technologies produced the highest level of life force energy, something we all want. So why test water? Well, water is life. It pervades everything and very every aspect of life. And most importantly, water records, holds, and transmits the information contained in its energy field. Drinking water with life-enhancing frequencies enhances our overall health and well-being through the power of entrainment. Entrainment can be thought of as the process by which a system's signal frequency held in the field entrains or synchronizes with the frequency of another system. Think resonance and harmonization. The field effects of the water we drink impact our entire system on all levels, for better or worse. And the idea of this study is to show what impacts it for the better. So water is everywhere within our body. It's the most abundant molecule in our cells, and it accounts for 70% or more of total cell mass. There are 30 trillion cells in our body, so that's a lot of water in our matrix of our system. Our bodies contain on average between 60 and 78% water, Blood contains about 90%. Water is in our fascia, our muscles, our brain, and all of our organs. The lungs, brain, heart, liver, and kidneys are between 65 to 85% water. A lot of water in our system. And drinking high frequency water in trains with the overall water matrix in our own body enhancing overall health, well-being, and vitality. The power of entrainment is huge. This shows what happens when we're entraining different frequencies. Oftentimes, the result is much more powerful than what we started with, in this case, life force energy. So how do we quantify or measure the energy? We can't see it, but we have four basic parameters that we look at when measuring with the GDV Pro. The first is area that measures the size of the glow or the size of the energy field being produced. You can see the green box shows the area or the size of the glow in general, but bigger is not always better. Brightness matters, and we can see that blue box now in the center is the part of the area that's really important. Brightness is energy. Brightness is life force. And total intensity is the second parameter. It measures the brightness of the field. The brighter the glow, the greater its strength and potency and greater the amount of life force present. And of course, life force equals vitality, and we all want some of that. So total intensity also measures the degree of overall constancy and stability of the brightness or life force over time. 
The point variation seen above in the red line and to lesser extent in the blue illustrates a lack of stability and constancy for these samples. Each point measures what the energy was doing in real time, and we can see that the energy is varying quite a lot as it moves through time, as opposed to this more stable tan line or green line on the top. We do not want our life force to ebb and flow throughout the day. We don't want it to be high one moment and then all of a sudden crash the next. A lack of stability and constancy can be likened to voltage fluctuations that cause a bulb to intermittently dim and brighten. And again, that's not what we want for our life force or our vitality. The third parameter is entropy. It shows the level of energetic activation of the field, relative chaos versus stability. It measures stability over time versus the gradual decline into disorder and randomness. So here we can see a field that is relatively chaotic and random. Wouldn't you agree? as opposed to this field that seems more ordered and stable. So overall activity versus the degree of stability of the energy field is what entropy is all about. High entropy, the energy is always percolating. It's always refreshing itself. It's more active, more energized, more alive. Low entropy, the energy is more stabilized, more resistant to change. One is neither better nor worse than the other, it just depends on the context, what we're testing. And here are some illustrations. We can think of low entropy as a snowflake. It's relatively stable, it's certainly coherent, and it's less changeable. High entropy is more like percolating teapot. It's more active, there's a lot more disorder, and it is certainly more changeable. So energy fields or carriers of information as informational fields, they're programmable or imprintable with life enhancing frequencies, which is what vibrance does with its products. The energy field holds the information. Think of it as the carrier or container. Form coefficient describes the ability of the container the field to hold that information. It measures the relative containment versus changeability or activity versus stability of the energy or information in the field. So form coefficient shows the level of informational exchange within the field, which is a very important parameter. It measures the evenness or outer contour of the glow the overall harmonization of the field. A high form coefficient has a lot of variation in the contour. Low form coefficient, very little. We could see in this diagram, low form coefficient, the field is certainly more contained, but it doesn't necessarily allow any informational exchange. The high form coefficient, on the other hand, is much less contained. The energy is more activated. The degree of variability directly relates to how well the field can hold information. So how well the field is able to carry, contain, and hold the information is important. If you had a bunch of gold coins, which basket would you prefer to store your coins in? This one or this one? I don't know about you, I don't want to lose any of those gold coins. I'd much prefer the basket on the right. So form coefficient is all relative. Too solid of a container does not allow adequate informational exchange. The old needs to be released so the new life enhancing frequencies can come in. We certainly don't want those gold coins to be all covered in sand, half buried, or sandy at all. We want that sand to get out 
the old information to be released so the new, more valuable information can come in. So when we view the energy field dynamics on the chart, we want to be able to tell at a glance what's happening, how that energy is behaving. And we do that through box and whiskers. This is the box. These are the whiskers. So they're quick visual representations of the field for each sample. And it allows us to tell quickly and easily if the energy is more coherent and contained or more spread out, random and scattered. And of course, the more coherent and contained the field is, the clearer, stronger, and more focused the informational signal is, which is what we want. So we can quickly see at a glance the relative height of the box and the distance between the whiskers. A narrower box shows an informational field that's much more coherent, clear, focused, and contained. And we see that in C, the top picture. We can liken it to a strong, clear radio station coming through with no interference. The information broadcast by that radio station is loud, it's strong signal, it's focused, no interference. And from a point perspective, we can see that the information up above here is coming across in a narrow band, not a whole lot of discrepancy between the points. A taller box, on the other hand, shows information that is less coherent, more random, more chaotic. The energy is scattered and all over the place, like we see here in the bottom, A. And we can see that even in the points here, that they're all over the place. They're not in a straight line like we saw before. We can liken this one to a weak radio station that's staticky with bleed through of other signals. I live in the mountains of New Mexico and when I drive sometimes on mountain roads, the signals from the radio station that I'm listening to get blocked. And if it's a weak station, it becomes staticky there's bleed through of other signals, and I can't really hear what it is I'm listening to. So let's look at the testing results. First, let's look at the water drops of the samples tested. We could see the first drop is from the water that came from the tap, city water, dead water. Pretty awful, really. But when we poured that same water through the bottle topper, it immediately got more vibrant, bigger in size. Then we added the red laser for 30 seconds. The drop is bigger still. And with the gold dot on the red laser, the drop got slightly bigger, but much more symmetrical with a lot brighter blue energy in the center, much more harmonized, much more vibrant. And when we read the chart, we're going to see a number of those boxes. The tap water is the red box. That's the baseline. The tap water through the bottle topper is the blue box with the red laser, the green box, and the tan box is the red laser with the gold dot. Our first chart is entropy. We can see by looking at the blue box that the tap water poured through the bottle topper created a lot of activation. The energy is really moving, which is a good thing. Of course, the size of the box and distance between the whiskers suggests that the energy is more random. Then certainly, when we added the laser, that same water became much more coherent. Once we added the gold dot, to the laser, the water once again became more activated, a lot more energy exchange, and a lot more coherent. The next slide is form coefficient, which shows some very interesting effects. The bottle topper immediately raises the form coefficient as energy begins to move in and out of that field. There's an energetic exchange, which is important. The laser really increases that effect 
as more information is added to the field. And with the addition of the gold dot onto the red laser, something really interesting happens. The form coefficient drops, which suggests that this water that's gone through both the bottle topper and the laser with the gold dot is much more stable and more likely to hold the information it's been imprinted with over time. The size of the glow got bigger. However, when we look at the laser, even though it looks like the area got smaller, it's actually gotten more concise. There's less randomness of the energy field. And when we added the gold dot, the tan box, the area again rose, is ever so slightly higher than from the bottle topper water. However, it's much more coherent sample, which is a good thing. Total intensity is the life force. And we could just see this beautiful immediate rise in life force with the bottle topper. And then it stair steps up, ending in this very coherent sample that's a, the highest on the chart of the laser and the gold dot. So in conclusion, the winner is the bottle topper gold dot red laser combination. The combination of all three technologies pioneered by Vibrance is a clear winner. Each builds on the other, affects the water in powerful ways, culminating in the high life force intensity shown in that last slide. So all of the Vibrance technologies tested made a difference. Each of the technologies augmented the field effects of the one used before. Certainly, the bottle topper alone creates a great structured water, shifting dead city water to something worth drinking, and I'd say that stands for a lot. Adding the red laser to the bottle topper water definitely made a difference. It stabilized the energy while also increasing its life force. But the further addition of the gold dot created a larger, much more coherent and brighter field. In other words, more life force energy for me and you and your pets even your plants, whatever you use that water for. So this slide shows my total intensity, my life force vitality level after drinking the water. And we could see by this gold box that it is high and coherent. I started off relatively high. I've got a good life force vitality, but I felt like I was bouncing all over the place. It was a stressful morning. And once I drank the water, I immediately felt all that stress just settle and dissipate. I felt energized, alert, yet calm, a good combination. And it hit me right in my heart center. My heart felt like it was giggling. So more life force energy in every glass of water, that equals more life force energy and vitality for you. Clearly, Pure Vibrance has done it again. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. <laughs> okay. We are uh, going back to the slide presentation here. All right. Okay. So again, I carry my sunshine, my Rocky Mountain stream with me all the time. And that's what we just, you know, we're experiencing through Dr. Kuhn's testing. And this is the you know picture again of the first water drop on the left being tap water the life force energy and coherence added with the bottle topper, then the red laser, then the red laser with the gold disc. And that's how simple it is 
to be able to hydrate your body every day. Another thing, you know, Dr. Batman Gallage book, your water for health, for healing and for life. Okay. You're not sick. You're thirsty. You know, with a lack of uh, cellular water, organs must compete for vital fluids. And that's what takes you out of balance, out of homeostasis into disharmony and disease. And when you drink the life force energy, structured water, microclustered, energy rich, electron rich, ionized, you can see how that can bring all that back. Just like Dr. Kuhn said, you know, she felt a little off and, and jittery. But when she drank the water, everything started to come back into balance. And balance is the key, you know. So uh, your water delivers ongoing life energy and harmony and harmony to you homeostasis, or it detracts from it based on the life force energy and the stability, the programming of your water. If you're drinking bottled water, tap water, as Dr. Keene said, that's dead water. It doesn't have a lot of energy and it's negatively programmed because of everywhere it's been. And so we clean all that up and take it to a whole new level with human blueprint frequencies and, you know, everything comes back to life for you when you do it. Because you got to you got to hydrate yourself. This is another test we did earlier with Dr. Kuhn did for us about uh, probably 12 years ago, something like that, when we had the, the red laser by itself. And this is on the left is a drop of uh, tap water, life force energy. And then in 30 seconds, we increased the life force energy just with the red laser. Now the gold disc is a biophotonic amplifier, takes it to a whole new level. And here's the, you know, it also neutralized the toxins. And then this is the effects on the biofield of the person before and after drinking the lasered water. And now we've taken it to a whole new level with the gold disc, the hydro uh, vortex uh, combo. Because, you know, our blood's 94% water, our brain's 78% water, our eyes are 98% water. So is water important? And again, water is used in every function uh, of our body, everything that happens. And requires water. And this is a test where we show, you know, in stages, the what we call bovis energy over in Europe. Uh, we call it life force energy here, how that amplifies with each step, you know, the hydro vortex first, red laser, then the gold disc. And it really takes everything. But it, what it doesn't show here is the human blueprint frequencies we're adding into the water with each step also. And the human blueprint frequencies are what's reprogramming the water to, to take your vibration to, to closer to optimal wellness. And then the body starts to heal itself. So we get amazing results. Uh, this is again showing, you know, your water, <laughs> if it's less than 16,000 bovis energy or life force energy, it's actually, you know, weakening your body. If it's over that, it's strengthening it. Well, we're way over it, okay? We're up, you know, when you use the red laser with the gold disc, that alone goes over a million uh, bovis energy. And uh, then you add the energy and everything with the hydro vortex. And everything's energy, you know, like uh, Nikola Tesla says here, you know, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Well, if you want to find the secrets to your health, it's also energy, frequency, and vibration. And we can help you change that vibration to be more coherent because your health is determined by the invisible frequency you're vibrating. And nobody else can change that for you. It's up to you. You know, nobody else can vibrate for you. Nobody else can smile for you, laugh for you, create the life that you want to live. So we're here to help you by giving you a shortcut. Okay. Again, you can carry your sunshine with you. Your Rocky Mountain Stream, we have an air ionizer. You can carry your Rocky Mountain air with you. Uh, it's all about creating a bio sanctuary in your own home for you to get your body healing itself naturally. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, give me a call uh, or, you know, somehow get a hold of me, text me. Uh, my number is 469-766-5511. And just give me a call and we can answer your questions and get you started on a healthier path if that's what your goal is. So take care, have fun, and bye for now. Mm -hmm.